Whenever you're here. All right. Oh, My name is Ernesto. I'm going to talk to you about social networks and health. The title is How Facebook Can Save Your Life. I will not tell you how it can save your life. You're going to have to kind of make that jump for yourself. I'm a PhD student at UCSD. I work in the Center for, for Wireless and Population Health Systems, which means I get to do a lot of cool tech things about health. So, social networks. Why do we care about social networks? And why should you care? It's because we're social beings. We like to get in groups. We like to meet up with individuals and talk about ideas and share information. And that's important to us. Why is sharing information important to us? Sharing information is important because it's what, we, what's what, it's what creates what we call collective intelligence. What some other individuals have called the human superorganism. And this gets back to that basic tenet that two heads are better than one heads. And if you think about online social networks, 25,000 heads are a whole lot better than two heads. So what are social networks? Networks are me and you and everyone we know. And people that try to understand networks understand the connections between me and you and everyone you know and everyone you know and everyone they know and everyone they know. And what's the function of a network? The functions of a network have two things. Integration. You belong. You're a good person. Welcome to my group. Give me a hug. And then the second function is regulation. You're doing something good. Here's a pat on the back. You're doing something bad. Don't do that again. So in terms of health, if you're doing something to better your health, we hope that they give that, that regulation to you. So a lot of good networks, or a lot of good researchers have been doing research about networks. You might have heard about this, obesity spreads through social networks, published in New England Journal of Medicine. Also, happiness spreads through networks, depending on your connection to an individual and then your proximity to that individual. In terms of networks, we should understand, I'm moving too fast actually, sorry. We need to move, in terms of networks, we need to understand the past before we can understand the future. In the past, it was hard to maintain the connections in your social network. Think about 20 years ago, calling your grandma. It took a long time. It was a big family event because it cost a lot of money. What about now? Now our connections, our maintaining those connections with our social networks are much easier. Here, everyone here probably has an iPhone or a Blackberry. We can get online and post the updates. We can talk to our parents. We can email them. It's always on. We're always connected. And we get to take our social networks with us. I move from San Diego and I go do something in Mozambique. I can take my social network with me as long as I can connect to the internet. It's that easy to stay with your networks. So why does Facebook matter? Facebook matters because as people interested in public health, we can really tap into how information is shared and sharing the correct information to better our health and your health and everyone's health. So what are some good examples of this? Who here has logged on to Facebook and put on something on a wall post? Who's logged on to Twitter and tweeted something within the last 15 seconds? <laughs> Great. You've shared information. Hopefully it was something good. Maybe you shared, hey, I went on a walk or I went on a run. Maybe you're on Facebook and you're part of M Diet and you went on there and said, hey, I lost 15 pounds last week. And your social support board said, hey, good job. How did you do it? Tell me how. Maybe I can lose 15 pounds. What if that happens? What if that happens on a huge scale, 25,000, a million? What about the swine flu? This is a mashup between Twitter updates and a map. This was done at University of Iowa. It was better than what the CDC could do in terms of tracking the outbreaks of swine flu. Amazing. And this has great health implications. So how do you do it? You connect, or you contact, you connect, and you cultivate. You want to lose weight? Get on Facebook. Sign up for a group, or maybe a running club here in San Diego. Contact that person. Create a relationship. Cultivate that relationship. How do you cultivate a relationship? Number four, the most important thing you can do in terms of your social network and your health is communicate. You ask questions. You listen to the answers. And then you also contribute. You become the new expert. Hopefully, maybe not immediately, but down that line. Something happens and you become that expert and you help other people and your network starts growing. So, a lot of the stuff that we talk about in health right now is focused on genetics. My genes are bad. I'm going to be fat forever. It's in the cards. What can you do? Well, you can't pick your parents. So if it's in the cards, sorry. But there's a lot of things that you can do. And what you can do is pick your friends. Someone. You can pick the people that you want to become a part. You want to become part of their social network. You want to integrate with people that have healthy ideas, have healthy habits. And you want to share your information with them and take information with them. And the asterisk is up there because you can also unpick your friends. You have friends out there that are fat, remember obesity spreads, maybe you don't want to be friends with them anymore. Sounds kind of harsh. <laughs> but if you think about it on a grand scale, it's something that we need to think about. 
So if you want to connect to my social network, my information is up there. I'm at UCSD. I work in Cal IT2 for the Center for Population and Wireless Health Systems. Thank you very much.